What do you say? It's 420 day. Welcome. Happy holidays. Kind of talking to you with Wilson every Thursday, 4 o'clock. I get in here. 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And rest assured, that's happening. And and I don't know who to thank, but, uh, you know, you always hope on 420 that you're going to have some fun stories to say. You know, you don't want to talk politics. You know, it's like fun ones, like, uh, like the 420-pound cannabis chocolate that you can buy. That's kind of exciting. Uh, and so 420, we'll talk about it. Uh, Minnesota, exciting news there. We'll talk about that as soon as uh, we get to it. Again, right before me was like a country show. I got to get that right. It's not side stage with Trav. I keep saying that. But at 10 o'clock in the morning, I think it's country something with Travis. Then you got me, Kenny Talking D with Wilson, 4 o'clock. Then after me, Stinky Arts Music Mart. And I believe it's wide open, which leads me to tell you that if you're a business owner, manager, or nonprofit organization considering advertising, why not learn what underwriting is on a nonprofit community radio station instead, Radio Free Fargo? To learn more about what underwriting is, please contact us at our website, www.radiofreefargo.org, or at our profile on Facebook. Why not let listeners know that you support the community by supporting a community radio station 95.9? And we could probably get you on the coolest day of the week, my day. But anyway, if you're looking to uh, underwrite or even be a DJ here, get a hold of that website that I just mentioned. I believe God put cannabis here for us to use as we see fit. So I thank him today because we celebrate cannabis today. And at 420... We'll talk about the origin of that. It's almost like Christmas, you know. They like there was something uh, on the roof, a clatter. I went to see what was the matter, you know. So there's a lore, a story of the origin, and, and there's arguments as to where, you know. Like some people say it's a, you know, Hitler's birthday. That's why 420 is uh, important. They, that, which why that don't make sense. But uh, the, or no, Bob Marley's birthday, my bad. But I feel like Hitler's in there somewhere too. Or it was like the uh, call numbers. We got an old four twenty when you were making an apprehension if you were an LEO. And so we'll talk about that again at four twenty. We'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. This show's brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. BlackCottageAlchemy dot com. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. Body butter. I use it. It's good stuff. 1,200 megs of CBD and it, comfrey, myrrh, colloidal silver, you name it. You got something questionable on your body. Why not start with this? Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. And I worship the creator, who I believe put cannabis here for us, every Sunday at Antioch Church, 10 o'clock in the morning, if you got a monkey on your back or you threw the monkey off your back, but you can still feel him pulling on your pant leg, we do a 10 a.m. 10 a.m. recovery for all you junkies. I kid. And then 11 o'clock, it's worship. Jump up and down, run around. Give the man upstairs his props. I'm on stick duty. Let's come on through. Can I talk in D on Instagram? But again, I, I'm, I'm anti-social media. And I don't know how to get back onto it because I logged out and I don't have the password. So it's still out there in the uh, in the universe. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's get into some music here quick so I can come on back. We can talk about cannabis. It's 420. So salute to you. It's kind of rainy out here, but we'll do it. Here's Life's Been Good, Dirty Heads, 95.9. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Life's been good. Dirty heads here on KRWF 95.9 Radio Free Fargo. Happy 420, everybody. It's kind of nice to have a radio show about cannabis, which, you know, ironically has to do with the holiday. However, uh, if you're anti-cannabis, you you can still celebrate 420. I mean, 420 is kind of a mindset, really. I mean, yeah, it's kind of created around the celebration for people who enjoy a plant that grows. Just like any other day, you got like pie day and what have you. And you don't have to, uh, you know, like pie to eat dessert on pie day. You know what I mean? Or just take the day off because it's pie day. And so for me, 420, certainly when I'm not indulging, say, uh, take a nap. Be nice to somebody. You know, take it easy. Slow down a little bit. That's 420, really. Just be cool with it. All right. 
However, at 420, I'm going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and I got a lot of fun news. Elon Musk does some 420 stuff, but we're going to rip through this here, and uh, I don't even know how many people really know where this originated from, so I feel like since it is 420, I'm going to hit you with what the what the going idea or the originating idea of 420 where did it come from and blah 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 now most people know about the waldos and we'll get talking about the san rafael rafael san rafael but anyway this is from maryjane.com there's another 420 origin story vying for stoner lore's top spot and so for many stoners, the origin story for 420 is canon. It's a group of friends called the Waldos who went to California's uh, San Rafael High School in the Sedneys where the progenitors, is that how they say it, of the now sacred number in reference to cannabis. But not so fast. Another group of dudes who were their contemporaries, apparently they went to the same high school, the Beebs, whose ringleader was a guy named Brad Band, say they were the ones who first used a phrase that has now become a worldwide holiday. So if you don't know about the Waldo side, here you go. The crew says they learned of an abandoned weed field and decided to link up after school at 420 to embark on a search for its cannabis bonanza. Soon enough, they saw that the rendezvous time became their shorthand for smoking cannabis in general. And through their fervent groupiedom of the Grateful Dead, the slang spread like the popularity of wandering psychedelic jam music itself. But a challenger has arisen. To this widely accepted narrative in the form of fellow San R, we'll say, because I'm having trouble pronouncing that, stoner friend pa- uh, Pack the Beeps. Leader Band says that 420 was actually first used in reference to cannabis by he himself while smoking at a fellow Beeb Dan Dixon's house in the Peacock Gap neighborhood. At 420, Dixon asked Band what time it was, and Band replied with the hour, it's 420, and we should load some bong loads. Now, apparently... This was also the origination of bongs, actually. Hardcore cannabis historians will not want to miss this article in FCG. Check that out. But they go into depth about which points of both stories are deemed weak by the dueling posses uh, posses and other acquaintances. So you can get into it a little deeper. Of primary importance are a debate over when bongs first appeared in San Rafael, whether high school kids were fashioning them out of bamboo, what time football practices let out, and the veracity of certain barn dance documentation. So, the Waldos went so far as to hire a private investigator to track down the man who hipped them to the supposed existence of the cannabis garden. Because apparently he was in, like, I don't know, like the Navy or I don't know. But he, he shouldn't be giving the information out, so they thought, well, it couldn't be real. But the investigator found the guy living on the streets of San Jose and managed to film him, saying that, yes, he had told the Waldos about this cache of cannabis. At the end of the day, the two groups may just have to accept that they'll never fully be able to lay claim to 420's origin story. But again, if you thought it was just about this Waldo character, don't forget about the groups, the group, the Beebs. Which, it's interesting to me, because apparently they got like this, you know, map from this guy. You know, and so it's kind of an interesting story. And I always thought it was just going out at 420 in like a park bench in the woods. I didn't realize it was searching for this treasure that turned into the time frame. You know what I'm saying? But you're listening to Can of Talk Indeed with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. That's going to happen here for you, I promise. So just stick around. I'm, I, I think I got time to hip you guys to Minnesota, which... It's exciting because when I read it, I'm like, all right, this is good stuff. Minnesota House will vote on cannabis legalization bill next week. They announced today on 420. That's right. Minnesota is getting the whole, uh, the House floor vote on a bill to legalize cannabis. It's officially been scheduled for next week. The sponsor announced on the Thursday's 420 cannabis holiday. Zach Stevenson. Big news, my bill to legalize adult use cannabis has been scheduled for a vote in the Minnesota House on Monday. We're very close to getting this done and gaining momentum every day. So that's crazy. I mean, I've been following this. They've just been 15 panels. They've approved the measure. So I don't know what that means. I don't know who's all in them panels. You know, are they are they stacked? You know, do they just put all the pro cannabis in? I mean. Uh, what's the what's the kind of the, the cross section of this? I mean, is that indicative of the House vote? Like if you times 15 panel time 10 people, isn't that all the House? 
You know, how does that work out? Because you're really getting people that will be voting on the House floor voting these panels through, right? I mean, I don't know a whole lot, but I do do know that it's kind of rain snowing out there if you live in Fargo. If you don't, who knows what's going on, where it is for you. But again, 420, that's what's happening today. It's exciting. I hope everybody's chilling. You're probably not outside in a hammock, not in my neck of the woods, unless you got, uh, well, unless you're crazy. And I'm sure there's a couple of you out there. That's a little nutty in your hammock. Get you some. All right. Well, so in recap here, this is from Cannabis Moment. Minnesota House will vote on cannabis legalization bill next week. They announced it today on 420. So that's exciting. Senator Lindsey says, so excited for my partner in cannabis to move his bill on the House floor. So uh, both bills have amended numerous times throughout this process with lawmakers working to incorporate public feedback. Da, 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 da. And so, again, Minnesota House of Reps is finally going to so let's let me uh, let me play a little tuny tunes here on uh, KRWF ninety five point nine Radio Free Fargo dot org streaming everywhere on the blue and green marble you are. I'm gonna play up a little Mary Jane's Last Dance, Fun Loving Criminals ninety five point nine. Mary Jane's Last Dance, Fun Loving Criminals here on Canatalk and D with Wilson. Programming on KRWF, LPFM, Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 FM. It's been underwritten by Flatland Guitar and Luthery. Flatland Guitar is your full-service guitar shop and your exclusive dealer for Yamaha, Taylor, Paul Reed Smith Guitars, and other brands. They sell guitars on consignment. They take trade-ins and have a full-service on-site repair center. Check out Flatland Guitar and Luthery on Facebook or visit them in person at 1450 25th Street South in Fargo. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, Saturday, 10 to 5, and closed on the Lord's Day. Well... It is two seconds to 420. It's 420 as we speak. It is 420 as we speak. We're going to do Can of Talk and D with Wilson segment. Get your Roman candles out. Put some underwear on your head. Run around the house. It's 420. We'll see you in a second. Hey, it's Phil from Can of Heads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canatalk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Happy 420 on 420 here at Canatalk ND with Wilson. 420, we opened a big fat bag of cannabis too, so that makes sense, doesn't it? But again, it's a celebration. Celebration of a plant that grows out of the ground, which would be just fine in any garden, sitting there doing the Lord's work. But let's get into this these stories. So this is from MaryJane.com. A cannabis company selling a 420-pound chocolate bar for $42,000. I know, I know. You guys just spit your chocolate milk out. $42,000 chocolate bar here, friends. A cannabis edible company celebrating 420 this year by infusing a 420-pound chocolate bar with 4.2 million milligrams of THC. Now, you know, we and we as pro-cannabis people, we like to say that nobody's ever died from overconsumption of cannabis. Now, however, if you ate this nine foot, four feet by three inches, weighs in at 420 pounds, includes 4,200 grams of THC, and in keeping with the 420 420 theme, is selling the edible for a hefty $42,000. So if the bar wouldn't kill you, that price tag is going to. You know what I'm saying? So Zen Cannabis, they're the ones who did it. It's not every day you make history and we're doing it here in Oklahoma City, said Zen Special Projects Manager Evan. We put a secret twist on our signature Zen bar and supersized it to create the big Zen nine by four feet, people. Now, creating this chocolate monolith was no easy feat. The company reportedly kicked off production at its Oklahoma City location four months ago by extracting five liters of cannabis oil from 100 pounds of flour. That's just, I mean, when you think about that into a chocolate bar, that's crazy. 
12 employees then spent six hours a day for 10 straight days mixing this dank oil with 12 40 gallon vats of milk chocolate they needed a custom mold and that took a month to make it took four pours to get the whole bar right those final pours took another 24 hours and then the massive confection was left to cool for another 18 hours in a refrigerated chamber custom designed just for this single task Massachusetts cannabis producers, oh, it definitely seems like the big Z could qualify for a Guinness World Record for the largest cannabis edible ever made, but sadly, Guinness refuses to acknowledge records of anything to do with cannabis. Massachusetts cannabis producer Mary Med discovered this lame fact after creating a three-foot square, 850-pound cannabis brownie with over 20,000 megs of the TH sizzle. That creation was actually the largest brownie ever made, but Guinness refused to award the brownie a record because it contained THC. Well, Guinness just got a little bit lame. Zachary insists that the big Z is for sale and not just a publicity stunt. I suppose if you get that custom-made mold, you want to sell at least a couple. Uh, the massive edibles for serious buyers only, but did encourage said buyers to start with small bites. Like, even a small bite on that size, you know, is crazy. Those 4.2 million milligrams of THC definitely overshoots the 1,000 milligram per package THC limit imposed by Oklahoma's medical cannabis regulations, though. Wrapping a 420-pound edible in child-proof packaging certainly seems like a serious challenge as well. So, there you have it. That's the opener. Can I talk in D with Wilson 420? This is from Ganjapanewer. Ben and Jerry's calls on Michigan to release cannabis prisoners on April 20th. Now, Michigan has legal cannabis, so I'm just shouting out, you know, we, we celebrate and we're, we're enjoying freedoms of being free. And wherever you're listening, if you have a state with a medical program and you're afforded the luxury, some people aren't. Most recent U.S. adult use cannabis laws have included provisions that allow anyone convicted of a nonviolent cannabis crime to have their criminal records is expunged. However, Michigan officials do not grant clemency, and there are people serving decade-long prison sentences for cannabis crimes. Michigan's adult use cannabis law did not include any such provisions. However, so th- however. Thousands of Michiganders remain locked behind bars for weed while others are free to buy, sell, and and consume as they please. The Great Lakes State first took strides to address the issue in 2021. Whitmer signed the Clean State Bill. This law finally directed state courts to automatically expunge the records of anyone who had been convicted of a misdemeanor. Uh, This law only applies to people convicted for minor crimes and not to the thousands of people who are still serving time for felony offenses. So, we got Michael Thompson's not the only person to be sentenced to decades in jail for selling cannabis. <clears throat> so, there you have it. Michigan, excuse me. <clears throat> Very legal. You can buy it wherever. But there's people spending, you know, 20 some years in prison. That don't seem right. This is from Ganja Manure 2. Hey, Ganja Manure 2. All the times Willie Nelson has been arrested for cannabis and got away with it. Shotgun Willie has been booked several times over his long successful career for cannabis. But given he slid out of them every time, maybe he ought to be rebranded as Slick Willie. In 1974, Dallas, Texas, Mr. Willie Willie got his first charge for cannabis possession, one of many to come. Three years later in the Bahamas, while charges were eventually dropped, Willie was banned from the country. Willie no more go to Bahamas. 1994 in Waco. What a crazy place to get busted up. Unfortunately, this arrest meant he missed the Grammy Awards that year. 2006, St. Martin Parish in Louisiana. This bust, authorities actually found mushrooms as well as cannabis. Well, I don't know his trip, Willie, too. 2010, man, he does have like a list, don't he? 2010, Sierra Blanca, Texas. This was Willie's most recent arrest for carrying six ounces in his tour bus, which he told Rolling Stone was a little bag. Um, I don't know about that, right? I don't know about that. That seems like... Quite a bit. Now, let's go to this one. ACLU defends Afro Man. This is from Cannabis Moment. In lawsuit from police who are upset, he used footage of their cannabis raid on his home and music video. Now, I've mentioned it before. I mean, I've been following the whole thing. When he posted the video, 
when he was raided. The crazy thing about Afro Man is everybody knows he's green, you know, and he's all about cannabis. So you could hit him with like this trafficking. Everybody, I mean, if you wanted to come up with a warrant to get into a guy's house, the guy that wrote a song that's, you know, made millions of dollars, that's almost a cultural household name, that that's what he's about. But kidnapping, that's crazy. You know, how do you get that? How do you get that added to your warrant? You know, I, I mean, it's kind of like, and he was even surprised. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was even surprised. So anyway, the ACLU, along with the organization's Ohio chapter, has filed a proposed amicus brief supporting Afro Man in a civil lawsuit brought against him by seven police officers who are upset the hip-hop artists use footage of their, you know, raid of his house. Afro Man was sued last month by members of Adams County Sheriff who conducted a 2022 search of his house that targeted. Now, if you haven't heard the song, Will You Help uh, Will You Help Me Repair My Door? It's pretty funny. You know, it's it's pretty funny. He basically narrates in song as these cops will work around his house doing stuff. So the musician later used footage captured by home security cameras and he wrote a song. The officers did not take kindly to that, however, and sued him for using their likeness for commercial purposes, claiming they suffered humiliation, ridicule, mental distress, embarrassment, and loss of reputation. Now, I would argue if you're doing your job and you're upholding the law as a respectful dude, you wouldn't have suffered any of that stuff because we would have given you respect probably. You know what I mean? You can't can't do humiliating stuff and then get mad that people find out about it. You know what I mean? You can't suck and be mad somebody watched you sucking. You know? So in addition to Foreman being named in the civil lawsuit, five other entities that reportedly helped market and distribute the Afro Man band brand were also listed as defendants. The officers are seeking damages and injunctive relief. And the first hearing for the case is currently scheduled for Thursday, which is the unofficial cannabis holiday for 20. Stinking Afro Man. He's supposed to be in court today. Do you think he is? Man, I bet you he tried to get out of that. I mean, if anybody's got his number, give me a ring. Will you call him? Tell him to get a hold of me. I mean, I don't see Afro Man going to court on 420. But anyway, along with ACLU, we're asking the court to dismiss this case, and we know why. It's without merit and was designed to intimidate Afro Man into silence and get the court to order him to stop criticizing the police. Afro Man, again, he rose to uh, 2000s with the hit song. So, and there's also a warrant, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it goes, uh, items of evidence, including but not limited to unknown quantity of cannabis, cannabis derivatives, and any or all other drugs of abuse. Uh, paraphernalia, like they cover it all. You know, and so let's see. And if the property to be found there to seize it, leaving a copy of his warrant. So they got to leave one there. Oh, so you are hereby commanded. See, this judge makes you, commands you to search and by any reasonable means necessary, the above named person, which that's kind of scary, right? By any reasonable means means necessary. What are we talking about there? Mace, smacky, smack, smack. What are we talking about? And our place for the property described. Serving this warrant and making the search during the daytime or nighttime within three days from the issuance of this order. So, there you have it. Kind of talking D with Wilson. It's 420. Hope everybody's having a good one. Uh Uh-oh, I think I just deleted something I didn't want to delete. But whatever. That's how it goes. Hi, Times. Elon Musk plans to to launch SpaceX Starship rocket on 420. Uh, they tried to do it on Monday, but it was rescheduled for a new date. That's today. SpaceX is targeting as soon as Thursday, April 20th for the first test flight of a fully integrated Starship and super heavy rocket from Starbase in Texas. The fact that it will launch on April 20th is perhaps inevitable, Musk tweeted in reply to the announcement. What makes Starship unique is its fully reusable transportation system designed to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit. Musk and the SpaceX team believe that humanity will return to the moon and travel to Mars. This particular test will help SpaceX improve the probability of success in the future. And they've done several suborbital flight tests of the Starship's upper stage. So this must be like a super rocket now. So we'll see what's going on with that. 
All righty. So there you have it. Elon Musk, past five years in the spotlight, on August 7, 2018, he tweeted he was mulling over private Tesla, quoting a price of 420 He said he seemed like better karma at 420 than at 419 but I was not on weed, to be clear. So there you have it. This last, man, I'm cruising through these articles. I'm going to have to pull something out of my hindy hole. Ganjapreneur, nearly all federal cannabis charges in 2022 are related to trafficking. There's a lot of interesting numbers in here. I don't want to, you know, muddle up your, your fuzz brains here. But out of the 806 federal cannabis-related criminal charges filed in the U.S., 98.8% were for alleged drug trafficking. Nearly all the cannabis charges basically comprised of just 4% of all the federal drug offenders, according to the U.S. Sentencing Commission, only 4%. Okay. The majority of federal drug cases last year was meth, 48.5%, followed by powder cocaine, 17.3%, fentanyl at 126 which I figured that'd be higher, right? Heroin at 8 crack at 5 and other drugs like Oxycontin, Oxycontins, blah, 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 just down to hundreds of cases. Synthetic cannabinoids, only 59 cases. So in all, federal law enforcement officials brought 806 cannabis-related federal charges, of which 796 were for drug trafficking, while seven were for possession in protected locations, which includes courts, and one charge related to continuing a criminal enterprise. The majority of the federal drug trafficking charges for cannabis were for be- between 100,000 and 400,000 grams. Another 38 charges were for trafficking between 1 million and 3 million grams. And I don't even know what that is. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what that is. But anyway, again, you've been listening to Canada Talk Indy with Wilson. And I've got to pull out some more news articles, man, because I just blew through them. And I still got time. I, I still got time to blow. So anyway, I hope everybody's enjoying their uh, 420 holiday. Oh, I forgot about this one. Good. I'm glad. All right. So this is a guy. This is an article. He wrote it. Uh, this is uh, written by Edwin Rubis, who's currently more than two decades into a 40-year prison sentence, handed down for a nonviolent cannabis crime. His release date is 2033. And he wrote this article called My 420 Behind Bars. He goes, April 20th is making its rounds again this year, but it isn't a celebration for me. Far from it. I will again spend it locked in a 10 by 12 prison cell, going through the motions of another long and tedious day, feeling the deprivation of my freedom, the insatiable longing for my mother and family. The 24 years I've already served feel exhausting, burdensome, and claustrophobic. The resulting effects of committing a nonviolent cannabis crime is unjust, harsh, and wrongful, but not in the eyes of the politician and judges who have the power to set me free, not in the eyes of the people who have forgotten about me. Boy, he just rhymed there. I detest sounding like a victim, he says. The circumstances compel me. The year was 1988 when I was hauled away to serve my time in the belly of the beast. I was struggling with a monkey on my back. Yes, I was trying to make an extra buck more than surely. But did it make sense to rip me away from my family for decades on end for selling cannabis to the highest bidder, particularly when no guns, drugs or money were found on me? Hearsay testimony is all we need, the prosecutor in charge opposingly said. The inappropriateness of my arrest and conviction and the severity of his 40-year sentence should call into question the execution of the drug laws in our country. But then again, who is he to question those who legislate the law? In 2023, I've been incarcerated for 25 years for a nonviolent cannabis crime and shall remain so for the next 10 years. See, now that's, that just seems wrong to me. I shall try to keep on surviving in the land of the living dead where there's no 420 celebration. No profit margin to gain, just lonely present days coupled with iron-fisted rules to subdue your self-will, to limit your life choices, such as what to eat, what to say, what to read, who to call, and even when to pray. Where the hostile, unfriendly, negative environment can utterly demoralize you, wear you down, and if you happen to throw the typical prison privileges into the equation for, for, for formality's sake, the few hour of prison visits on the weekend, the 15-minute phone calls from a 500-minute monthly allowance, the basic channels on TV, the limited overpriced snacks and processed food, the bare minimum assistance to health care, the leather and wood shop hobby participation, the old acoustic guitars from the music program, then you have a picture of humanness. But if you carve under the surface, you'll soon discover the corroding waves of carceral oppression, the restlessness, the human uneasiness, the insufferable woe, which compels anyone, well, let me say everyone, to question their purpose for living. 
How do you survive in such a place? He doesn't know. Only by God's grace. I've been able to maneuver along the path of great resistance, filled with unexpected inmate drama and uncalled for violence. Only by God's grace, I've been able to overcome the garage. Man, garage. I mean, I don't know how to pronounce it. And mental anguish. I've suffered over the past several decades behind bars. He's found the strength to accomplish over 30 education and rehab programs, which includes three college degrees. He's actually... Uh, Let's see, what is it here? He's actually uh, working towards his PhD in Christian therapy. Now, if you want to send him a personal text message, 256-695-0223. So 256-695-0223. So his nonviolent crime, as it stands today, resembles a crime crime for felony murder. Because the average time a convicted felon serves in prison for murder is 23 and a half years. And by this time, he's way past due. The only hope I can now cling to is for my fellow advocates, my unknown friends, to empathize with my heartless, cruel, and unjust situation. With my life, if it has any value, if it has any worth, and extend a lifeline to my family's fundraiser to help set me free. Without such help, the years will keep mounting up season after season. I'm reminded of the bitter emotions I felt today when I was taken away. The gavel struck past judgment 40 years. His mom screamed, his wife cried, he cried, and his heart in pain, burning emotions. Then led away by force without a say-so, without consent to face the years he's already served and the 10 he has left. Shout out Edwin Rubis. And again, as we celebrate 420 free, again, say a prayer for this guy. Can I talk in D with Wilson? Every Thursday I get in here. 420 open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And this Thursday was no different. However, it is a holiday, 420, a uh, well-known cannabis holiday. But again, you don't have to be into cannabis to celebrate a day that's really just here to kind of, you know, reflect and relax and uh, read a book. Be nice to somebody. Pay it forward a day. You know, take an extra nap. You know what I mean? Think about coming to church, my church, on Sunday. Think about it. Think about a better life, maybe. And then think about this Edwin guy who's gotten 25 stinking years for something that isn't looked the same now, but he's still bound up and hemmed up. And if you got $42,000 and you'd like to buy yourself a nine foot by four foot chocolate bar, took a hundred pounds of flour to make, get a hold of Zen chocolates and they'll take care of you. But anyway, programming a 95.9 Radio Free Fargo KRFLP has been written by Drummer's Journey. Drummer's Journey offers percussion instruments, hardware, electronics, accessories, and more. They have full service for drummers, including repair, custom building, and lessons. Drummer's Journey is located at Highway 10 East Small, Moorhead, Minnesota. Their hours are Monday through Thursday, 11 to 7. Fridays and Saturdays, 11 to 5. Sundays, noon to 5. For more info, check drummersjourney.com. They have a profile on Facebook. All right. Well, I'm going to hit you with a double shot of cannabis kind of related songs. And then I'll come back, I'll tuck you in, tell you to have a good day, and then that'll be it. And then there'll be a Stinky Arts Music Mart after me. So here's Wildwood Wee, Jim Stafford, 95.9. And there you have it. First up was Wildwood Wee, Jim Stafford, 1974. Wrapping that up, Langhorn Slim, private property on 95.9. Radio Free Fargo. Dot org streaming everywhere in the world. If you're in Fargo, it's a little rainy, a little snowy on this 420. But again, this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. BlackCottageAlchemy.com. Body butter, 1,200 megs of CBD. A bunch of other seasonings in there, I like to call it. Rub it on your body. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. 420, enjoy the rest of your day. I've got some work to do, but, uh, you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to fret or stress. Everything's good. Everything's cool. This 420, kind of talking D with Wilson. I opened a big fat bag of cannabis news at 420. If you didn't get a chance or you want somebody else to listen to it, you can still check this show out at RadioFreeFargo.org. If you're looking to underwrite, Get a hold of us as well. I believe, again, God put cannabis here. And if you put it here and it helps some people, then I thank him for it. And so there you go. 
I think I'm going to jump out of here. Again, educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis so you can educate others on the benefits. And I think I just have ran out of stuff to say. So again, happy 420. Shout out to y'all. I'll be back next Thursday. Is that going to be May? Not sure. But uh, I say I think I noticed a little bit of grass outside. I think the snow's about gone. So, peace to you, friends. And we'll see you again real soon. David Allen, Judgment Day. Peace.